I'd just like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Wurundjeri and Boon Wurrung peoples of the Kulin Nation. I also pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Now Donna is going to introduce Kate, so enjoy. Hi everybody, thanks for coming um, today. It's really exciting that you're all here. I'd also like to um, acknowledge that I'm on in Parkdale here, I'm on Boon people who are connected to the land and waterways around here. So I'm here um, on behalf of Keylight, our fantastic group that we're doing. Hello, Alex. Um, is to introduce our next speaker, which is um, Kate Murray, who's up there looking excited and nervous for her talk. Um, Kate is a PhD student and casual academic here at Deakin University. Her current practice-led research is concerned with the representation of women across differing national horror cinemas, with the female ghost being a space for revelation. Kate is a Melbourne-based filmmaker whose films have screened at Grimfest, South Texas Underground Film Festival, Monster Fest, Horror Hound, and the Perth Revelation Film Festival, and the Women a Melbourne Women in Film Festival. I can't forget that sound, to name, of, to name a few. She has written and directed two short films, Atonia, which received the Media Films Recognition of Excellence Award, and The Fox, which is in the middle of its international festival run. Kate is a member of Key Light, that we're all here today, reading and screening the fantastic and the Asian Media and Cultural Studies Network. She's presented her research on women in horror at the 2019 Revelation Perth International Film Festival Academic Conference and the 2021 Virtual NEMLA Conference. She teaches in media genres, screening history and the Australian moving image at Deakin and we are really delighted to have her as part of the Key Light group. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to you, for you, Kate. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Donna and Chris, and to everyone who is here uh, to listen today. Thank you. Thank you so much. So yes, my name is Kate. I'm a PhD student at Deakin, and I now study film, but I grew up as a theatre kid, and that was the path I always thought I would take. Uh, I did unfortunately struggle with anxiety after finishing my degree, and it was my dad who suggested that I go back to university. So that led me to meet my fellow Key Light member and filmmaker, Dr. Donna McRae. And since then, I've found a new kind of confidence and passion for my studies. And so I wanted to take this opportunity today to share with you my research journey and the filmmaking projects I worked on at Deakin, from my honours to my master's to having begun my PhD. Uh, packing four years of research into 15 minutes <laughs> does feel um, problematic, uh, but I'm hoping that I can share how my curiosity into Australian horror cinema has eventually become this transnational feminist study on ghosts that I'm working on today. Uh, when I started my honours, I wanted to, oh, is my screen sharing? Yeah. Oh, it is. Right. Apologies. <clears throat> I wanted to explore the relationship between Australia's national cinematic voice and the horror genre. And the first short film I made was heavily inspired by the experimental style of Australian art horror cinema that I was studying. Um, so I began looking into the history of Australian horror cinema from early 1970s Australian Gothic to the rise of exploitation cinema of the 80s to more contemporary films, including The Loved Ones. I wanted to incorporate experimental characteristics of Australian art cinema with popular conventions of the supernatural horror genre, and so I made Atonia. Set in the Australian suburbs, Jack is haunted by the presence of a ghostly woman, unable to turn to his grieving father or young sister Olive for help. Jack falls victim to a series of dark hallucinations as their female and male personas kind of cross over in this cycle of fear and inner turmoil. My research into the Australian horror cinema had inspired my creative work and after making the film I wanted to continue into this area of study but from there I decided to expand on my research through a transnational lens. Uh, 
Adrian Martin suggests that uh, one key problem with previous analysis of Australian cinema is that general reluctance to embark on international or cross-national comparisons. There is a large, amazing body of work that unpacks Australian horror cinema. It was harder for me to find studies that discussed a comparison between Australian-made horror films and those produced overseas, uh, excluding Hollywood. So Cradle to Crypt was my master's study. I explored moments in contemporary Australian and South Korean horror cinema, where filmmakers had either contributed to or challenged these universal tropes in horror cinema that regarded the representation of the female body and motherhood. Um, as I said, I wanted to continue study Australian horror cinema, and I just really enjoy and appreciate Korean horror films. Both national cinemas have created a very strong horror tradition by drawing on familial cinematic tropes, and there's also been an increase in production for both as well. I was also interested in the representation of women and so feminist film theory became a really important foundation to my own research. Essentially, I wanted to deepen my own understanding of the relationship between uh, cinematic national voice, gender and genre by looking at both monstrous mothers and female ghosts. I cross-examined four films, two from Australia and two from South Korea. I found that whether it was their overbearing nature or their complete lack of maternal affection, mothers continue to be a catalyst for violence in horror cinema. Both The Babadook and A Tale of Two Sisters open up cinematic storytelling possibilities though, because they have a more complex consideration of the monstrous mother. I also decided to draw attention to the female ghost with a specific focus on her ability as female to function as a narrative device. And this is um, you know, how filmmakers and audiences can engage with important themes within the horror genre, such as entrapment, abandonment, and revenge. The Babadook encourages sympathy for single mother Amelia. Paula Quigley suggests that by having Amelia play mother as a victim, monster and saviour, the film subverts dichotomous representations of mothers as either good or bad. In Two Sisters, the mothers are also presented as monstrous. However, it is the stepdaughter, Sumi, that is projecting her own guilt and fear onto the mother characters. Both films connect with national filmmaking traditions, as well as conventions of the horror genre that position women as monstrous, but they subvert traditional storytelling because they identify the source of the mother's monstrosity, and they care about their central women. In Lake Mungo, Alice Palmer drowns in a river at the age of 16. She's preserved as a phantom, trapped by her family's inability to process her death, but they later abandon her. In Cello, Miju is haunted by the ghost, or Wonhon, of a friend she has betrayed out of jealousy. Throughout the history of Korean horror cinema, when a person commits evil, their punishment is dealt to them by their victim's ghost. Both of these films prompt a critique over the destructive oppressions experienced by women, one through female abandonment, and one through female revenge. And it's also really important to note that female interaction is key in these films to highlight those uniquely feminine negative experiences. And so that led to The Fox, my second short film, which materialized out of a fusion of Australian and South Korean cinematic influences. It follows Sue, who inherits her childhood home after her mother's death and she takes her young daughter and partner to live there. They soon discover they're not alone as a ghost sheds light on a dark truth, and both Sue and her partner must come to terms with the consequences of their actions. And I wanted to play the trailer for you to give an idea of uh, what the film is like. So in the film, Sue is both a monstrous mother and a ghost. The revenge arc that was inspired by 
the, the Wonhan allows Sue to be both victim and monster in a way that is both believable, but also familiar to cinematic tradition. The haunted house in the Fox became a really empowered space, both in a gendered and a cultural sense. Um, whilst the house is presented as like a crypt-like space where characters are trapped, Sue has an emotional bond to the house. And so she feels at home whilst her, her partner Hamish doesn't. And being the only male character, uh, he kind of is representative of the patriarchy and their rejection of him therefore becomes a rejection of male authority and a kind of taking back of the haunted house. I didn't see The Fox as a feminist film as the narrative doesn't really subvert previous representations of the monstrous mother. It does, it did however help highlight the importance of creating a complex character in order to attain that necessary level of spectator empath empathy that you would need to achieve that goal. I also found that we could perhaps draw from Sue's character that the monstrous mother can be used as a narrative device to challenge internal struggles beyond motherhood. So such as cultural representations that embrace intersectionality within feminist theory. Evolving from my master's research, my current work is looking at the woman as ghost across various national horror cinemas from the 1930s to today. And I'm hoping that it will shed insight onto localized cultural and political influences that continue to affect racial and gendered representations in horror. My previous research revealed the need for a more exhaustive investigation into concepts uh, such as, you know, what is meant by the female perspective textually and behind the camera, what constitutes the national in horror cinema, and how these terms are constructed differently over time and across different national cinema cultures. It's also going to be important for me to address how the meaning or significance of these specific ghost figures could be diminished by removing them or not understanding the specific context in which they're created. So the study has to take into consideration uh, that to avoid a kind of shallow, unreliable analysis. The study will look at uh, the woman as ghost archetype in Mexican, British, Japanese, African, Indian, South Korean, Australian and Thai horror cinema. Uh, horror films centering on the female ghost include Australia's Lake Mungo, uh, the UK's Women in Black, uh, Nigeria's Madame Koi Koi. There are also multiple cinematic depictions of real world mythologies and folklore, such as Mexico's La Llorona, Japan's Kuchisaki Ona, and Thailand's Maynak. The Morning Sight is the working title for my feature film concept. Set in 1920s Australia, an elderly man makes his living by exploiting families affected by the war as a spirit photographer. He is unpredictable, paranoid, and he displays vicious bursts of anger towards his young apprentice, one day killing her. The house becomes a container as the two characters, one dead, one alive, torment one another in a kind of game of cat and mouse. Time is distorted as the apprentice's memory is often scrambled, fragmented, and at certain points completely reset. And through that perspective, the film, uh, I hope, will play out in dreamlike cycles of repetition. The young apprentice comes to realize that like the old man, she is feared within the house. And so wielding this newfound control, she learns to make alterations, changing events within the repeated cycles and eventually reversing her tragic fate. In this experimental horror film, I'm hoping that the apprentice's death is not seen as a literal death, but a metaphorical death and rebirth of agency and autonomy. In the past, I'm worried that sometimes my filmmaking has been heavily research led and so I want to push my practice led research. So I've drawn inspiration from surrealism and experimental horror and exercises including making collages and automatism to help develop the concept for this film. And I'm still in the early days of constructing specific scenes of horror for the film but I've been using collage making as a process to help find that inspiration. So I thought I would share some of the collages I've created so far. So I tend to spend the mornings searching for material on Pinterest, kind of falling down the rabbit hole as you do, going from one image to the next. Sometimes I'll deliberately search for specific tropes that I'm researching. So things like ghosts, spirit photography, water, women. 
Uh, and at other times, I'll just pick uh, a random color theme and I'll see where that goes, for example. Uh, and that is basically where I'm at. And it actually concludes my talk for today. So um, thank you all so much for coming and listening. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope I didn't rush through too much. <laughs> thank you.